Mark's gospel. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is Septuagesima, 70 days from Easter, give or take. Numbers in the Bible are fungible. Seven days to create the world. Forgive someone 70 times seven. We're not talking about math here. We're talking about poetic expression. So we are roughly 70 days from Easter. And next Sunday will be sexagesima, roughly 60 days from Easter. And then quinquagesima, 50. We are in pre-Lent. And so we mix the purple of Lent and the green of the season after the epiphany as we begin to prepare. And so our lessons are beginning to prepare us. In today's gospel, Jesus coming into the temple encounters a man of an unclean spirit who immediately sees him and says, what are you doing among us? You are the Holy One of God. Throughout Jesus' teaching, throughout his ministry, he never proclaimed himself that. We see Peter confessing him as the Christ. He kept it quiet. And so this unclean spirit possessing this man shouted it out. And Jesus rebuked him, commanded him to be silent and to come out of that man and convulsing and being ripped apart, the spirit departed from him. Until the advent of modern psychology and psychiatry, demonic possession was considered to be the root of aberrant behavior, the root of what we now know as mental illness, what we now know as psychotic behavior, and now I'm getting into Alan McCollum's territory, and I won't go very far into it because I am not, nor do I play one on TV, a psychologist. But I do know that not all spirits are holy. And that's what's being drawn here. In our Old Testament reading, we are given the antitype for today's gospel, Frequently, that's how the gospel and Old Testament lesson are chosen. The gospel was chosen, and then an Old Testament antitype. And the antitype for the type of today's gospel was prophets who are false, and if you listen to them, you will die. Unclean spirit. The unclean spirit, call it what you will, the devil, Satan, a demon, a spirit that is not holy, something that is not physical, something we cannot see, taste, touch, smell, but that we can sense, speaks to us and sometimes speaks to us with the ring of truth. You are the holy one. And yet twists that truth and leaves us in pain. You've experienced it in your life. You've asked God to show you the way, and yet you experience such pain and agony that you think God is punishing you. God will never punish you if you ask him to show you the way. If you're experiencing agony, it's because a competing force has led you down a competing path. Lent is a period when we can examine ourselves, when we can turn away from things that have been taking us away from God, away from ourselves, away from our families and friends and 
that which we were created to be, a time when we can begin to restore ourselves with God's help to what we were created to be. And pre-Lent can be a time when we prepare to do that. Here's one way that I do that. And I draw your attention to the lesson from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. And Paul talks about food. And what he's saying here is, it doesn't really much matter if you eat or don't eat or what, if you eat food that had been set aside for false gods that don't exist, it really isn't going to hurt our God. However, if others see you doing it, it might shake their faith. So don't do it. Fasting is a noble and traditional act during Lent. And what I take on during Lent is a thing I call fast to feed. And during pre-Lent, the weeks of Septua, Sexa, and Quinquagesima, what I do is I note down what it costs to feed me and water me, whatever I eat and drink, and what it costs during those three weeks. I then come out with a daily average, and I write it down. And then during Lent, I reduce drastically what I eat and drink. And whatever that difference is of what I spent before Lent and what I spent during, I give to a local food charity. I'm going to invite you to join me in Fast to Feed this Lent, and I'll be sending out a, a little worksheet for you to join me in doing that. This is an opportunity to make an offering. A sacrifice is a holy act, if you look at the Latin roots. Sacra, holy, fice, act, action. We can make a holy act out of abstaining from meat or whatever it is that we choose to abstain from by reducing our expensive drink or alcohol, by, expen by reducing our food intake entirely, by reducing the quality of our food and thereby the expense, by reducing the number of meals we have and spending the time that we would otherwise dedicate to that towards something improving, toward prayer or reading. Whatever it is that you choose to do specifically, this would be an opportunity to begin to create healthy spiritual life where non-healthy spiritual life may exist. And if you need a guide personally to talk about that, reach out to me. This is something I think about a lot and it's something I've helped people with a lot during my time as a priest. The process of sanctification is a lifelong process. And that's why the Christian life is often called a journey. And the Christian religion in the very first days was called the way. St. Paul, when he went to the Jewish officials, was encouraged and in fact given authority to arrest any who were part of the way, the path. This pre-Lent, let us prepare for that Lenten journey as we make our way toward sanctification in God this day, this Lent, and throughout our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.